We're now going to look at Cardano's formula from the point of view of radical extensions and from the theory of symmetries that we've developed in Galois theory. Let's start off with a fairly general cubic polynomial. We'll keep it monic and we'll write it as x3 minus s1x squared plus s2x minus s3 so that these s's are the elementary symmetric functions in the roots. So we'll let E be a, a splitting field, the splitting field for this polynomial over Q, so it's generated by these three roots. We now realize E as a subfield of a radical extension in such a way that Cardano's formula falls out easily. Specifically, what we're going to show is if omega is a third root of unity, if delta is this product of differences of the roots, and if gamma is this combination of the roots and omega, then our radical extension is Q contained in Q omega, contained in Q omega delta, contained in Q omega delta gamma. And this is a radical extension because delta squared is actually in Q. Gamma cubed will show lies in Q omega delta and E is contained in Q omega delta gamma. So this is the radical extension uh, that E is contained in that's guaranteed by our Galois theory that we've seen earlier. So let's start off with delta. Notice that when we square delta, we get something, uh, an element of E, which is invariant under any permutation of the roots. So it certainly must be fixed by the Galois group and so it must be in E, uh, in Q, sorry. Uh, so we, to see what delta squared is explicitly, we just do a fairly lengthy calculation, which is painful but straightforward. And we get the capital delta, which is delta squared, is given by this combination of the elementary symmetric functions. And when we go to the classic case, x cubed plus px plus q, this simplifies to the formula delta equals minus 4p cubed minus 27q squared. So that's the first part of the radical, uh, the series of radical extensions. Uh, now we want to do the most important part, the last part. So let's, uh, for... Uh, Brevity write k for q omega delta. What we're looking for is an element gamma in E omega whose cube is in k and such that k gamma is actually the whole of E omega. So it contains all the roots. Clearly E omega is the splitting field of f over q omega. So we can view the Galois group of this extension as a subgroup of the symmetric group on the roots. And if we define gamma to be alpha 1 plus omega alpha 2 plus omega squared alpha 3, then any cyclic permutation, the cyclic permutations of the roots send gamma to gamma, omega gamma, and omega squared gamma respectively. So gamma cubed will be invariant under any element of the Galois group intersected with these cyclic permutations A3. So that tells us that gamma cubed is in a smaller field and a lengthy, again, another lengthy but routine calculation tells us what gamma cubed is. It turns out to be this expression here, which is a combination of the elementary symmetric functions, the SI, which are rational, uh, the square root of minus 3, which of course is expressible in terms of omega, and delta. So this belongs to Q omega delta. Now we want to show that E omega is equal to K gamma. So to do this, we need to show that all of the roots are in K gamma. Let's define beta to be the slightly different combination of the roots and omega alpha 1 plus omega squared alpha 2 plus omega alpha 3. If we multiply gamma and beta together and again do one of these calculations, we get s1 squared minus 3s2. So beta 
uh, is S1 squared minus 3S squared over gamma, and it belongs to K gamma. Of course, this assumes that gamma is not zero. In the case where gamma is zero, we need to replace K gamma by K beta and continue the argument in that way. Uh, and again, beta cubed by a very analogous calculation to what we did in the previous page is in Q omega delta, it's in K. Now, we have a uh, system of equations uh, throwing in also S1 equals alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. We have a system of equations in the unknowns alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, uh, which we can solve. And this gives us formulas for the roots. Alpha 1 is gamma plus beta plus S1 over 3, etc. So in particular, this certainly tells us that the roots lie in K gamma. And so this proves that K gamma is equal to E omega. The formulas, of course, also tell us how to solve the equation. Uh, recall that delta squared is given by this formula here. Um, we then find a square root of 3 root minus 3 delta over 2 squared, which is minus 27 capital delta over 4. And then we find gamma by taking the cube root of this quantity here and form beta in this way. And of course, beta can also be described as a cube root in a kind of analogous way, as I mentioned earlier. And combining all this and these formulas, alpha 1 equals gamma plus beta plus S1 over 3, etc., gives us some very explicit formulas for the roots. And I've actually generalized this to the case where the polynomial is not monic and played around with it a little bit, but it's only a little more work to show you that these formulas are the completely general versions of Cardano's formula for the solution of the general cubic equation.